If you're wondering whether you should be taking a probiotic for your skin, you've picked the right video. In a little over 10 minutes, we're going to cover what probiotics are, the different ways you can consume them, and the exact probiotics you should take for different skin concerns. And spoiler alert, the best choices aren't necessarily these sexy skincare probiotics you see popping up everywhere. I almost guarantee you're not going to find this level of detail in any other video on this topic. So if you're ready to get serious in the know, let's go. So a quick hello if you're new here. My name is Fiona and I'm a registered nutritionist with a master's degree in nutritional medicine. On this channel we talk about how to eat for great skin because true skincare starts on your plate. If you haven't already please consider hitting the subscribe button because it really helps the channel. So let's get into this. What are probiotics? Now you probably know this but let's just recap. The official definition of probiotics is live microorganisms which when administered in adequate amounts may contain for a health benefit on the host. That's just science talk to mean little bugs that help you out when you eat them. And in case you haven't noticed, probiotics for skin are huge right now. And it can seem weird that something you take on the inside can help your skin on the outside. But it's all to do with the fact that as these bugs or these microbes pass through your body, they interact with your immune system, which winds up having an anti-inflammatory rejuvenating effect on your skin. It's the gut skin axis in action. So how how can you consume probiotics? The main ways to consume probiotics are through food and supplements. So let's look at food first. Humans have been consuming naturally fermented probiotic rich foods for about 10,000 years. The most potent ones you'll find around today are kefir and kombucha and kimchi and sauerkraut. But other more ordinary foods like natural yogurt or sourdough bread or even cheese also contain these friendly bugs or these friendly microbes too. Now food products don't fit the technical definition of a probiotic because you can't always measure the number and types of bacteria in them. They tend to change with each batch of the food, but they're still worth including. And that's because there's evidence that eating these types of food regularly can have a really positive effect on your health. And for skin specifically, I think the food really worth including is kefir, which is fermented milk. I've spoken about this at length before, but just to recap, drinking kefir regularly has been shown to help with acne, and eczema and it can even boost hydration in normal skin. You can think of kefir like yogurt's super successful, super talented, super impressive cousin. In fact, kefir is kind of like Beyonce of the fermented food world. I drink kefir every day, so if it's something you want to do too, you can check out this video which tells you all about how you can make it yourself. Before we move on to probiotic supplements, let me just cover the probiotic drinks, things like Actimol and Yakult, because I'm asked about these a lot. Now, these aren't naturally fermented foods, because because the probiotic bacteria is kind of added artificially after the product is made. And studies show that some of these don't really add much value because the bacteria is killed off in your stomach before it can do any good in your gut. But one study did show that the bacteria in Actimel can get through a simulated digestive system and still multiply at the end. Now Actimel does contain some bacterial species that may help skin, but it's still not my first choice. To put this in perspective, a bottle of Actimel can contains about 10 billion bacteria. Now that sounds like a lot, and it is a respectable amount, but a single glass of kefir can easily contain double or even triple that. Plus it contains a much wider variety of bacteria and other microbes like friendly yeast. There's also research to suggest that being in a food form helps these microbes be more effective when they're actually in your body. So focus on choosing naturally fermented foods and eating them little and often is the way to go. This could be a glass of kefir, but it could also be some natural yogurt or a tablespoon of kimchi or even just a slice of sourdough bread. If you can get one type of naturally fermented probiotic rich food in daily, you're doing really well. Right, moving on to supplements, which is how most of us know probiotics. These can come as liquids or sachets, but they most often come as freeze dried capsules and they can be really effective, but the trouble is, most people don't know how to use them properly. And if you really want to make a difference to your skin, you need to know the detail. So let's dive into that. What you need to know about probiotic supplements. Here's the thing, probiotic bacteria and other microbes are little snowflakes. They're all little individuals like you or I with different strengths and weaknesses. If you look at bacterial names, the third part of the name indicates the individual strain. So for example, Lactobacillus rhamnosus 
GG sounds really similar to Lactobacillus rhamnosus GR1, but actually GG is a very different character to GR1. I've mentioned this before, but a really easy way to understand this is to think about dogs. All dogs are mammals and all dogs are the same species, but we know a St. Bernard has a very different energy to a Chihuahua. And the reason I'm telling you this is because the effect of probiotics are strain specific. They're specific to the little individual bacteria. So back to GG and GR1. GG you'd use for digestive conditions and some skin conditions, which we'll come on to, whereas GR1 you'd use for women's intimate health concerns. They're very different functions. And it's the same with dogs. You would pop a rescue pack on a St. Bernard and you would put your Chihuahua in your handbag and you would not <laughs> swap them over. And this is the secret to choosing probiotics that work. It's not just any pooch for any purpose. Where possible, it's using the strains that have been proven to work for certain skin concerns. So let's look at what science actually says about probiotics and different skin challenges, kicking off with probiotics and sensitive skin. Up to a half of women and a third of men identify with having sensitive skin or a compromised skin barrier. And one randomized placebo-controlled trial showed that taking Lactobacillus paracaceae NCC2461 every day could improve both skin sensitivity and skin barrier recovery. As an aside, for the purists out there, Lactobacillus paracaceae has recently been renamed Lactobacillus bacillus paracaceae. I know that, but this stuff is confusing enough without the scientists changing the names on us. So we're going to stick with the names that are appearing on supplement pots for now. But I will flash up the new official names for all the probiotic strains I mentioned because in time they will start changing on the pots as well. So Lactobacillus paracaceae NCC2461. If you feel your skin is prone to redness or it feels tight or it's super reactive to lots of skincare, this one could be relevant to you. This strain is sometimes known commercially as Lactobacillus paracaceae ST11, just to make this even more confusing, and you can find it in this probiotic. One capsule a day should give you a sufficient dose. Now I will pop product links in the video description box below. Now probiotics are generally considered to be safe, but as ever, please remember that this advice is not personalized to you, and check in with your doctor before you start any new supplements. Moving on to probiotics and acne. Now I've done a whole video on this which I'll pop there for you but let's cover the basic facts again here. One small but high quality trial showed that taking Lactobacillus rhamnosus SP1 can help to modulate some of the hormones that drive acne and clear breakouts by up to a third. Now confusingly again SP1 is another name for Lactobacillus rhamnosus GG which is the strain that I mentioned before which is widely commercially available. You can find it in this product and one capsule a day is enough to see an effect on your skin. Now this one could be worth trying if you have acne and especially if you find your acne flares after eating sugary foods. Now for acne the research we have so far also suggests that taking a blend of lactobacillus strains may help and I know this flies in the face of what I just said about strain specificity but the reality is we probably haven't found the best strain for acne yet or the more likely scenario is that the best strain is different for everybody depending on their existing gut microbiome. So by using a blend you may up your chances of finding the one that really works for you. A good example of this are the strains in this product. I'd go for two to three capsules a day of this one. And again this may be worth trying if you have acne and especially if you've ever been prescribed antibiotics for your acne. Now I know some people swear by spore-based probiotics for their acne but to be honest the research doesn't really back this up yet. But if you want to try a spore-based probiotic, you can always go for this one. And again, one capsule a day of this is enough. Right, next up is probiotics and eczema, or more specifically, probiotics and atopic dermatitis, but eczema is how most people refer to this condition. And this has received more probiotic research hours than any other skin condition out there. The evidence so far suggests that probiotics are way better at preventing eczema than they are at treating it. And what I mean by that is that if you are a pregnant woman, if you take a probiotic while you're pregnant and just after, you can reduce the chance of your baby developing eczema later in life by up to about 40%, which is just amazing and kind of crazy. But some research does suggest that probiotics can help if you are an adult and you already have 
have eczema. Now, a few strains have been tested, but one that is showing some pretty respectable results is Lactobacillus salivarius LS01. This has improved skin condition in both adults and children, and it has reduced that dreaded itch. You can find this strain in this probiotic. One sachet a day is enough, but because this is a practitioner only product, you will need to work with a registered nutritionist or other practitioner to get your hands on it. Their website can help direct you to someone who's conveniently located for you. And again, I will pop all those details in the video description box below. Now, the alternative for eczema is to use a probiotic with a blend of lactobacillus and bifidobacteria strains, something like this one. Again, I know this goes against strain specificity, but some research does suggest that a blend of these two genera may help eczema too. And for that purpose, I would go for one capsule a day of this one. And finally, we come on to probiotics and aging skin. A randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial with people in their 40s and 50s showed that taking Lactobacillus plantarum HY7714 daily decreased the depth of wrinkles, boosted hydration, and improved what the research is termed skin gloss. In other words, the people taking the probiotic looked a bit glowier, dewier, and younger. This is a picture of one of the candidates' wrinkles at the start of the study, and this is a picture of the same wrinkle at the end of the study. So you can literally see the difference. Now, this was an industry-sponsored study, and what that means is that the people who own the probiotic strain were conducting the research, but it's still an interesting finding and actually it fits in with other studies we have which are beginning to show the anti-aging potential of probiotics. The problem is I do not know of any commercially available probiotic supplements that contain the strain. So I'm mentioning it now in case you come across a probiotic with the strain in the future. And high quality brands should list their probiotics to strain level on the label. So keep an eye out for this one. And if you know of any probiotics that contain it, I would love to hear. So let me know by popping a comment below. So to sum up, research here is new and developing, but probiotics may help your skin. As a baseline, eat and drink naturally fermented foods and kefir can be especially helpful for skin. If you want to supplement with probiotics, choose strains that have proven skin benefits. Science shows us that specific strains can help with sensitive skin, acne, eczema, and aging skin. Thank you for watching all the way to the very end. I hope you found that useful. If you did, you might like another video I've done on the anti-aging supplements that actually work, which I'll pop there for you. I hope to see you there. Otherwise, I will see you next time for another video on nutritional skincare. Thank you for watching.